Today we talk about probiotics and gut flora. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And this is a topic that there seems to be a lot of confusion about the language. And I, I, I'll talk to someone and they'll say, oh, I've just got a lot of a digestive upset. And I said, oh, have you tried uh, enzymes? And they say, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm taking a probiotic. And there's, I'm like, no, 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 we're, those are not the same thing. Enzymes are enzymes and probiotic are probiotic. So let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. And when we talk about probiotics, I'm talking about bacteria, okay? These are bacteria. And you think, what? I'm actually taking a pill of bacteria? Yes, you're taking a pill of bacteria. So I'm sure you've heard, or maybe you've heard, and we'll do more of this when we get to the skin, that on the surface of the skin, we have a natural bacteria, right? And you may have heard that if you use antimicrobial soap, you know, the stuff that has the chemicals in it, it actually strips your skin of the, of the natural uh, of bacteria that ends up on the skin. And then that can be, you know, you know, you end up with problems with the skin. So, well, the thing is, the lining of the gut is epithelium. It's essentially a specialized form of skin because if you follow the skin, goes that it goes in the mouth. All of it is skin. This is all skin, and it goes down the tube. And anything inside the tube is still outside the body. And then, and I know we've talked about that before, but let me. It's worth saying again. Anything that is this is a tube. If I if I blew up the tube like a balloon, I could drop a marble through the mouth and it would fall right down through out the anus. It would never touch the body, right? It would, anything inside the tube is still outside the body. So we have this flora, just like we have bacteria on the skin, we have bacteria on the inside. It is on the inside of this tube, but it is nonetheless still outside the body. So the role of digestion, which we did last month, and then elimination, so these, are, these, these functions are linked, the role of digestion and elimination is to bring into the body, absorb the nutrients we need, and make sure we eliminate uh, pass through the things that we don't need. Now the thing about elimination is we there are things that we just want to push on through, right? So we're, we just not absorb them. That's not really elimination it's per se. I mean it's 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 elimination from out the tube, but we also dump toxins into the bowel and get those out. So we, this this environment of the bowel is very important, and the environment is controlled by what bacteria are in there. Now, let me make some clarifications. I have a, I have a PhD in cell biology, so I, I geek out about some of the details on this. So if I get too excited, that, you know, and you're not that excited about these bugs, then okay. But there there's a distinction between bacteria and fungus. Okay, uh, they're t completely different creatures. So, but what a lot of people don't understand is that yeast is a fungus. It's just a, it's a way a fungus grows in, in its, in, in, in very small, you know, kind of spherical form of growth of a, of a fungus that's called a yeast. So yeast is really a form of growth, but it is a fungus. Okay. So when we talk about yeast overgrowth, it is a fungus in the gut that is growing instead of the bacteria. And if you're familiar with that anti, um, the antibiotics, right, the medical antibiotics, they're produced mainly by fungus. Uh, you know, penicillin was developed or, or identified as something that was killing bacteria next to a fungal colony. So you had a, a fungal colony growing on a petri dish with bacteria, and they saw, realized that on the, on the outside of that colony, the fungal colony, it was killing all the bacteria near it. And so they said, oh, there must be something going on. The fungus must be producing something. So if we take this back to the gut, we don't want a yeast growing in our gut potentially producing an antibiotic or compounds that will harm the bacteria that are in our gut, right? So we definitely want to make sure that we don't have a yeast overgrowth. Now, typically, if we, you know, if I know I'm kind of scattered a little bit here, but, but I'm just kind of trying to package this and get, get an understanding of when we talk about gut flora, what are we talking about? And there's a lot of words that people throw around. I have a yeast overgrowth, I have candida, I have this, and, and it's not necessarily, and people are not necessarily using all the, the language or understanding what they're saying. So hopefully I'm just clarifying some of these things. So we want these good bacteria, and in the, the Young Living product Life 9, we've got nine strains uh, if, you're, if you've been around Young Living a while, you had the Life 5. Remember the old Life 5? I've got one of those bottles. Um, 
the, the life five was five clinically proven strains to, to be beneficial to the gut. And now we have nine. Okay. So we just increased the, the, the product or quality of the product there. I think there's some 17 billion live cultures, very, very, you know, uh, proprietary method of maintaining the, the, the pro potency of these things. And you, if once you get your probiotic capsule, you want to put that in the fridge, but the probiotic capsule, a really good product of, you know, if, if it's a good product, it's designed to make it through the stomach and that young livings are have a delayed release designed to make it through the stomach. Why? We don't want the bacteria in the stomach. We don't want to break that capsule open in the stomach because we need that bacteria down in the gut. So this, if you follow just the logic with me, let me I'll, talk, I'll talk a little bit about when we take it, how we take it. But let me, let me complete the discussion or, or finish the, the little discussion I'm talking about between bacteria versus yeast and fungus. So we, when the, the, the bacteria, when the chemistry of the gut gets out of balance, and this can happen most commonly when we have poor digestion. And we have poor digestion, you can go back to last month, we have poor digestion when we have stress, when we have structural compromise, uh, we're not producing enough enzymes. Uh, those, these are some of the things that might happen with poor digestion. You know, we have things that block absorption, et cetera, et cetera. But if we don't digest our food properly, and we have undigested food that make it into the tube down through the, the intestine, well, it, once it's past the stomach, there's nothing really there to break the food down any further. So if, if chunks of food make it through the stomach, the gut's kind of in trouble. Now we have a situation where you've got these uh, undigested food, too much sugar uh, making it into the, to the bowel, and you end up with a yeast bloom or overgrowth. They, yeast loves sugar, okay? And so we get these, these chunks of food that make it down in there. If you're not digesting your food properly and you get a yeast overgrowth or fungal growth, and that's gonna impact the whole environment, right? This is a, a, an environment in the gut that we wanna maintain control of, and we need these good bacteria to do that. Think about this tube. It is a long, windy, warm, moist tube, 30 feet long, and you know, if you left something out on the counter, if you left food on it on the counter, um, in fact, if you, if you chewed up your food uh, and then spit it out and put it on the counter, how long do you think it would be before that thing started growing fungus? <laughs> you know, you could even probably do it and you know, clock it in hours, right? And so your, your mouth flora makes a difference of what goes down. We'll talk more about teeth. That's, you know, we're going to have a whole t discussion about how important it is to keep your mouth clean and, and uh, you know, teeth and, and what's going on there. But so these are the back, you know, this is what's happening as we're getting this stuff to come down. The stomach hopefully will kill most of this, although there's a bacteria that can survive in the stomach, the Helicopactor pylori. Um, and so, but we, let's not go there for the moment, but we want to get these good bacteria down into the gut. These are the ones that are really good for the gut itself. So we want to maintain that good environment. We don't want to promote the, the growth of yeast. We definitely want to promote the growth of these, these good bacteria. Well, here's the thing. Once those bacteria are growing in there, they should be cultivating their own growth. I mean, they're, so once we establish that flora, if we don't disrupt it, we should be good. In other words, it's not one of those supplements that you necessarily have to take all the time forever. Once the floor is established, now you might have trouble getting it established and you might have habits and situations in your body where that it's, that it's constantly throwing off or challenging that, that, that stability of the environment down there. So it might take some wellness approach, you know, it might take some time and, and, and uh, things that you're doing and getting all these cleanses and starting to do all these things that we've been, you know, cumul cumulatively talking about to get the body stable enough and well enough and, and you know, balanced enough so that we're not constantly beating up on these bacteria. So it, it, what, what I'm saying is once you're established in that, that, that you know, gut flora, it should be good. You shouldn't need another one. If you take an antibiotic, if, you get, you know, if, you, if you're doing that, uh, then you definitely need to, to reestablish that and go through another round of taking the probiotics. And so people say, well, I take, I take a yogurt, is that good enough? Well, yogurt is typically full of sugar. Uh, it also is a, is a dairy-based thing, which makes the body acidic in general. So I don't think that yogurt is a very good form of 
of probiotic. Now, some people get some benefit from kefir, uh, which is a different, a different type of bacteria that they're using to, to culture the, the, you know, it's not yogurt, it's kefir. Um, and I'm not going to argue all that. I just think it's, it's far cleaner and safer to take a, a, a supplement that's designed precisely for this. And again, this, uh, this uh, Life 9 that Young Living has is designed to make it through the stomach and into the bowel. So here's how we need to take it. We need to take it uh, away from food. I know it actually says on there with a meal. I'm not sure why, but personally, I would take it away from food with a lot of water. So, it, you know how we drink our morning water. So I would drink my morning water. Let's say I would drink 16 ounces, and then I'm going to drink another eight ounces or so. And during that second eight ounces, I'm going to take, you know, put me. You can put some if you're one of those that likes to flavor your water. Put your lemon oil in your water. That type of thing. But that is when I'm going to take the Life 5 or Life 9. Now, I get this question a lot and it, it's worth talking about. I've heard that the essential oils and bacteria don't, don't mix very well. And that's true. So I definitely would not want to take an essential oil capsule at the same time that I'm taking my Life, uh, my life 9 probiotic. I definitely want to separate those. So if I'm taking my digestion cleanse in the morning, for example, I would not want to take that at the same time I'm taking my Life 9. I would want to separate those by you know fairly a good amount of time, and I mean like maybe even an hour. So if you know, I would just kind of look at. So one of the best times to take it is either, for, like I said, first thing in the morning when you drink a lot of water, flush it through, or take it before bed. Okay. And now we're talking about this month doing uh, maybe a one-day liquid fast. I'll talk about that in, uh, in next week. But um, taking one day out of the week and we're going to do a liquid fast. So that might be a day where you could take an, a, an aggressive approach. You could, you could really saturate with your probiotic and take one capsule five, eight times a day. Uh, and then you don't do it again. That's it. You just do one saturation protocol and be done with it. And then you save the rest of it in your fridge. Uh, and you've got the other, the other capsules there if you need it. So sometimes that, you know, there's, there's an appeal to that for some people. Um, no, that's not going to be a dangerous way to take that product. We'll talk more about that when I get there, okay? So, but no, I would not want to mix essential oils with it. Now, this brings the other question and say, wait a minute, if I'm taking an essential oil capsule like Digest and Cleanse, and it makes it through the stomach, it break up, breaks open in the intestines, does that potentially have a, have a threat to disrupt the bacteria that are in the gut? And here's why the answer to that is no. The bacteria that we're talking about is all the way down in the colon. So from the time that that essential oil capsule breaks open to the time it, you know, it, it, it's going to go immediately, it's fat soluble, it's going to go immediately into the lymph system uh, and into the bloodstream. So that's where you're going to get bulk of your oil going straight into that. The amount of oil that actually literally physically makes it into the bowel, it's so minuscule, you're not going to get an effect on uh, any of the bacteria down there. So now, if you were to... Um, do a colonic where essential oils were added to the colonic, then you might actually be uh, dealing or imbalancing the, 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 the environment for the bacteria. But by washing the colon with a colonic, uh, you know, it, we're talking about an, an enema, you know, sort of a, a deluxe version of an enema. If you're doing a colonic, you're, you're, you're disrupting the bacteria anyway because you're washing out all of that. So that's a whole different volume. If you're doing colonics, you need to support with a probiotic. Okay, so I hope this is starting to clarify some of these things. We need the probiotic supplement to reculture, to reestablish the, the flora in the gut, but it's not something we necessarily have to do all the time, every day, all the rest of it. Once we get our flora established, once our body is more balanced and more stable and generally more well physiologically, we shouldn't need to take that again. We only need to take it when things get out of balance. I know there are going to be people who disagree with me on this issue, but this is my stance on it. Um, and and I'm you know you're fine to do whatever you like, but that's my position on it. So now there's going to be several ways you can take this. Just to reiterate, we can take this on a daily basis for a little while, one course of of this, and so take it every day for 10 days in a capsule. Um, that's usually what I say. if you haven't established it in 10 days, then you got other work to do to get your body on imbalance, or you got to or you got to work on your diet or something. So take it one a day for 10 days. Uh, and that's like what I call consider one course of the of the probiotic or take 10 in one day on a day that you're doing a liquid fast. And we'll talk more about that. OK, so that's kind of the overview. I hope this is helpful uh, and we'll be doing more and uh, having more discussion about gut health in general. But we're talking about elimination this month. So all of this is important for elimination. I really didn't talk about how 
what the bacteria does in the gut, but maybe we'll do that another time. Happy wellness, and we will continue this discussion on gut, eliminate, gut flora and elimination.